Okay, good afternoon. We're just gonna wait for a few seconds here while we get some folks joining and trickling in. While you're joining, do us a favor, drop in the comments, let us know where are you coming from. And by the way, if you're representing a startup uh, or a small business, show yourself some love. We wanna celebrate you, let us know who you are, give a shout out to yourself. And also feel free to go ahead and put some questions in the chat and in the comment section. We will do our best to answer them for you while we are on our session today. All right, I see New Jersey. Jersey's in the house. Callie, what's good? Callie's so great, it's awesome. Okay, I think we've got a good group. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's roll. Welcome hmm. to Roll Talk the virtual series where we give you behind the scenes access to industry experts, trends, everything that's happening, insights, all the good stuff that you need to know. We are here to support you and we are here to give you access to the people that you need access to. My name is Mac, I am a serial entrepreneur and I am your moderator for today and I am very privileged and lucky to be part of the role by ADP team. We are going to talk about something that is so important to our audience today. And that's access to funding and the fact that we're existing in a super tight labor market, right? So before we get into all of that good stuff, let's meet our speakers for today. I am honored and privileged to introduce you to entrepreneurial powerhouses that they are, Roberto Maziero and Kenso. Roberto is the founder of Roll by ADP. He is also the founder and head of all of ADP Innovation Labs. And Ken is the founder and CEO of Tilful. So gentlemen, before we get into all the shop talk, I need to know, we need to know, what are what was your journey? Tell us a little bit about how you became an entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit about your startups. Roberto, why don't you go first? All right, thank you. Thank you again for uh, you know uh, having me and uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. A little bit about me, um, again, uh, you will see by the accent, I came from Brazil, mm -hmm. so uh, that's where my journey as an entrepreneur uh, started. So um, very early in, in my uh, career, while I was still in college, I uh, decided to start my own company in the software space. I think that was back in the days, I don't want to say how many years ago, there was a lot of opportunity in many different fields. So started actually three different companies. I mean, the first two didn't work. And that's why one of the important things is persist, uh, you know, keep, keep pushing. The third company that I started really, um, you know, worked. Uh, we created a product that was fairly successful. Um, Brazil is a very big country and we needed money. And unfortunately, we didn't have someone like Tilfo in there uh, back in those days. So the only way to get capital was to, you know, um, kind of either find a good partner or get a loan, like a simple loan on a bank. So we started doing pitches to banks um, and, uh, and trying to find a partner. And uh, in one of the trade shows that we participated, ADP, was a couple of booths down on 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 that uh, on that floor, and we started a conversation, and it ended up that um, you know ADP acquired uh, my startup, my company, and uh, you know they used the software from my company to run basically ADP Brazil, uh, and then a couple of years later they invited me to come to US, and um, and you know. That the rest is history. I mean, I've been with ADP for um, you know almost twenty years now, um, and three years in Brazil. The rest here ran very big groups within ADP, and then, and then about ten years ago, I pitched to the CEO and the CIO to create this innovation lab, the sort of department to incubate new ideas, come up with new products to make the life of our clients better, uh, and many products uh, that we push out of the lab is like our ADP mobile and uh, you know our ADP marketplace and now this wonderful product that we might talk a little bit about which is called Roll by ADP which is very novel uses a conversational UI for the small business to be able to set up and run payroll in 15 minutes um, and take all that complexity out of their uh, you know their hands so that it can really focus on what is important their business their clients, the success of uh, 
of their uh so that that's a little bit about me amazing roberto thank you so much uh ken i know you have a an awesome story as well and we need to hear it <laughs> Well, I don't know if I can top uh, Roberto's one, but uh, I don't have the accent, but I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, but um, I, my, my journey started when I was young. Um, and I always grew up in, grew up in this uh, small business household. You know, my dad was always a small business uh, entrepreneur since, you know, from Hong Kong when he was in Hong Kong. And then when we immigrated to Canada. So I actually get to see all that growth, you know, when I was young and all the trial and tribulation that he had you know, immigrating to a country where he didn't really speak the language. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we were living in a French speaking city. And so really, and he, he didn't even have, have a car at the time. And so kind of learning all that when I was young and seeing how hard it was to build any business, whether it's a venture back or, or whatnot. Um, and uh, I think the one thing that really stuck with me was collecting money, you know, chasing customer, getting them to pay. It was like, a lot of shouting matches, very difficult. And, you know, fast mm -hmm. forward to, to, to now, or to, you know, when I was older, I, you know, got my degree, came down to Silicon Valley, started off as an engineer. And uh, so I was in the semiconductor space. Um, I wasn't a founder, but I did uh, you know, have experience with a couple of startups. One was not successful. We went under during the dot-com days, and then one uh, was acquired. So had a taste as a as an early employee all the way to getting a, a nice exit. Uh, I did make a career change into finance, so the, I spent a number of years, you know, you know, uh, investment banking and and uh, doing M and A, working for large companies, running, sitting on the other side of the table, acquiring companies, mm -hmm. uh, looking for for startups to invest in. Um, and uh, I, I knew that wasn't my calling. I, you know, I was I was enjoying it, learning a lot, but I knew that wasn't my calling. So I left to start uh, uh, Flowcast, which is essentially the parent company of TOEFL. And the idea of Flowcast was really looking at the intersection between AI and, and financial data, because I was working underneath the CFO office, and we had like all this data in the ERP system, and all we were doing just was, was quarterly reporting. And, but there was so much customer insight, vendor insight, supplier insight that we could essentially extract from that data. And uh, so that, that was really the initial genesis of, of the company. Um, I was a bit lucky. I you know, had a, a co-founder who was actually a data scientist, knew a lot about data and building models. Uh, she came from American Express, JP Morgan. So it was a good, you know, mm. for me, it was actually a good way to start having somebody with that expertise. And I came in from more on the business side. Uh, and then, you know, we were successful in lending some large companies, including Nike and Procter and & Gamble. And, and, and then subsequently, a lot of the large banks found out about us. And uh, so we decided to really focus on financial services as our as a pain point and going after use cases and credit risks, uh, you know, helping. And that's how we started to help small business in changing and modernize the way uh, we look at credit risk for, for small businesses, doing small business lending, working capital loans, and, and, and you know, things of that nature. Um, one thing we learned was a lot of data, you know, what hinges and built, you know, what's pivotal was the data. And we mm -hmm. didn't own any of that data because our clients and banks own that data. And we couldn't take that data out or do anything with it beyond you know working for the banks so we decided to launch tilfo which is a direct to small business platform helping to transform how business credit is done you can think of it as like the credit karma for small business uh it's really cool. to help the underserved small business getting access to this business credit and we discovered that was the way to really be able to for us to build this database of uh of data and our focus, our niche was really around open banking. So taking data from bank data to really be able to understand and, uh, and, and find intuitive ways to help them extend and help lenders extend capital to, to these small businesses. Um, and that's, that's sort of how, how we started. And, uh, and then now, now here we are with ADP and looking, looking to grow from here. Yeah, I love it. I love both of your your journeys and kind of the intersections of it. And I love that you're both waking up every day trying to solve problems. 
for small business owners, founders, and entrepreneurs. Like I love that that's at the heart and the unifying factor. And so it's, it's so dope and that's so awesome. So thank you for, for sharing your journeys. I feel lucky that we all got to hear them. Um, so let's get into it, right? I mean, deeper, let's dive a little deeper into some of the challenges that we're seeing in the small business space, right? Access to capital. Let's start with that one, Ken. You know, just as you're kind of talking about finance, let's roll right into that. It's such a huge problem, right? Whether you're trying to launch a business or grow your business. So what are a few resources that you could recommend for someone and, and you know, sort of like right now, and they're looking to kind of grow their team as it relates to access to funding? How would you kind of have them approach it and what resources could you recommend? Yeah, yeah. Certainly, I don't, I don't want to pluck ourselves, but we, we're certainly the, the one of the few that uh, can help <laughs> with small business uh, getting access to funding. Um, but it is a journey. So, you know, whether you're just starting out, getting your LC to getting capital to say, you know, run your Amazon business or mm -hmm. or run your, um, you know, retail business to much later stage where you're looking to expand different offices, different locations. So it depends on kind of where you are in, in that journey. And we're trying to help on, along, along that life cycle of your business. And um, a lot of times, you know, a lot of businesses do struggle with getting capital, startup capital upfront. And obviously banks wouldn't want to lend to a new business without any track record. So how do you, how do you overcome that? And a lot of products out there today do tap into your personal credit. So having things like personal guarantee, having things that, uh, that are collateral from your personal asset to finance against the, uh, the capital you need to grow that business. Uh, though there are resources out there that doesn't tie into the, to the personal credit side. Uh, and that's what we do. You know, Tilful is trying to solve the problem of separating uh, your business credit from your personal credit so that if something goes wrong with your business, it doesn't affect your personal credit. Mm -hmm. And that lasts a sub, almost you know, seven years if something happens to, to your personal credit side. It takes a long time to, to, to recover from that. Uh, so we want to be able to help them build that journey on day one rather than day zero. And, um, and we've seen a, a, you know, the market has shifted from the start of the pandemic where you know, no one was lending at all for a good six months. Mm -hmm. you know? And then the government came in with stimulus checks from PPP. Now we're seeing we're seeing huge demand for for capital, and it's not for debt consolidation, which is a lot of lenders don't want to lend for debt consolidation. They are lending to towards like building and growing the company, and that's what we'd like to see, and um, and that's what we're we're hoping on. Uh, so some of the very interesting use cases out there that are looking to help small business in, in growing, uh, in in uh, cutting costs, uh, whether it's expansion or uh, buying mm -hmm. new equipment to, to reduce, you know, overall costs. I think that those, there are quite a few examples out there that, uh, that we're helping at the moment. I think that's so helpful because if you are a small business owner for the first time or an entrepreneur for the first time, or even if you're not given the current economic stat, like sort of situation in the market, like you need to kind of hear what those options are. So that's really helpful. I would love for you to give us some just advice really quickly how to grow a business in a cooling economy, right? How, how to kind of face that? What is your sort of words of advice and your advice nugget that you can give to our audience today? Yeah, I, I would, I would think, I would say there are two things. One is I wouldn't look to funding, even though we, we help with that, I wouldn't look to funding on day one. There are other vehicles to, to help, uh, you know, mitigate some of the, the, you know, the headwinds that we're seeing in the market, such as things like renegotiating, uh, your vendor contracts, you know, get some, mm, maybe yeah. extend, be able to get, ex, you know, extend your net terms with your, your vendors. Uh, or s similarly on the other side, your customer, can you get them prepay you upfront? Because cash flow is king. So how do you mm -hmm. prolong your cash flow, you know, in times of uncertainty? I think that's number one. Uh, number two is, you know, looking down the, you know, down below the, uh, along the PL and seeing what are opportunities where you, you can cut costs. Um, I know, you know, you're facing labor shortages. It is, and, and as interest rate rises and inflation, it is more, more difficult. Um, but there are ways where some of that there's, you know, ways where you can outsource it outside the country. If it's, uh, if it, if, you, if that's allowable, uh, or things that, um, you know, you can find replacements, different suppliers, different vendors that may have offer a lower price. 
I think there are other opportunities before really tapping into the capital side. And, uh, and then lastly, it's education. A lot of times we find the expectation and reality is very mm. different. Like people are expecting, I'm going to, you know, my business is qualified for you know, half a million dollar loan, but in the reality is 10 X lower uh, that lenders are willing. So there's that reset of, of education is required that we find. I think it's really sage advice. Cash flow is king is absolutely true, but you're right. Before mm -hmm. they sort of jump and go for that, they really should evaluate what other options, like what other tools they have in their toolkit, right? Before kind of just placing all the eggs in that basket. Awesome. Okay, want to pivot to Roberto. As we're kind of thinking, we're, you just mentioned labor shortages, Ken, so I love that you did that. That super helped me out. We're post-pandemic, Roberto. We're post-great resignation. We're, we're in the situation we're in today. I am really curious, you know, how should small to medium sized businesses, founders, entrepreneurs, what do they need to be doing to engage and retain their employee base right now? Right. It's a, it's a somewhat of a challenge. Um, it is. And, and it's almost like it doesn't matter if you are in pandemic, if you are in a mm -hmm. verge of a recession or, you know, a very hot market what we call this war for talent. I, I don't remember the last time I heard that, ah, no, it's, it, now it's super easy. I mean, I go on, you know, I put a sign on my door and there's people flooding in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's very important that you put a package together that, you know, makes sense, uh, both from a compensation, obviously observing your operating costs and all that, but but it's attractive, it's competitive, and I think that's one of the things that we try to help as well is to give you some benchmarks on what the industry mm -hmm. in general is paying. I think also is the flexibility more and more after the pandemic. I mean, unless your business is totally presential, you need to be on the store or whatever, you know, the mm -hmm. flexibility of where to work from. And one of the things that independent of sort of the location of the employees is flexibility on the pay. One of the trends we're hmm. seeing even on row is more and more people not paying on a frequency. We used to have like, oh, I pay weekly, I pay bi-weekly, I pay monthly. Now we see more and more people paying on demand. Whenever the gig is done, so if I finish painting that you know, house or mowing the lawn or, you know, whatever it is, driving that truck from point A to point B, um, you get paid. So you might get paid every day. You might get paid every other day, whenever. And I think that is an interesting thing because it also helps in some cases with the cash flow, which is, which is so important, as Ken said. I mean, it is one of the most stressful things for a uh, a small business is how to control the cash flow. And I think this idea of, okay, I do the job, I pay my employees, I, I now have the money to, you know, whatever, get more inventory, what, whatever it is. I think, I think those are the things that if you have a good, you know, mechanic um, and, and a beautiful package to offer your employees, you will be much more attractive. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for those employees. And also the level of personalization and access you give to the employees. We think it's very important for them to, you know, be able to see those, you know, the hours they're working and how much they made and in, in an easy way. And that's why we think mobile is king, you know, giving employee access to all that data on their mobile devices in an easy way also is a retention factor. And that's why we mm -hmm. think, uh, you know, having a system, it doesn't need to be raw anything, we like row, but having a system to give access to the employees, empower your workforce to be autonomous, to be able to do whatever they do on their own. Um, I think it's something that, you know, sells and retains, um, you know, for the small business. Yeah, I love what you're saying there. New wave technology is going to create change, right? And it's changing and based on what the actual end users need is, right? Which we love yep. to see with the evolution of technology. You know, I, I know that spot bonuses, hiring bonuses are a big thing. Are you seeing that sort of from your data as well, Roberto? Um, in some industries, it depends on the industry. Yeah. If there is a lot, if there is more, you know, sort of demand and offer, definitely we see mm -hmm. some of that happening. Um and I think it, it varies both by industry, a little bit by geography as well. But but it's definitely something that you need to be willing to do if you have the capability to to get new talent in. I think on the hospitality industry, there is a lot of demand for 
you know, yeah. uh, for, for people and, and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, offer out there. So in some industries, very, very much so. Uh, in others, not that much. Yep. Yeah, super helpful. Thank you so much for that background. Before we jump to questions, just really quickly, we've been talking a lot about role. We've been talking a lot about TOEFL. People might not know how to access them. So I'm just going to let you guys know if you head to the App Store, they'll be there. Also, you can visit TOEFL.com or roll by ADP. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about questions from the audience. Um, we see a few coming through. Um, Roberto, let's start with you. A yep. question from our audience is, how do you stay on top of industry trends? Because I cannot imagine what both of your schedules look like. How do you have time to learn? How do you have time to sort of stay ahead and be in the know? Um, I, th I think a lot is just, you know, having good sources of, of, of knowledge and news. I think, you know, uh, mm -hmm. having conversations like this. Um, and exchanging notes with other founders, with other, you know, industry leaders. Uh, also, I mean, I hear to a lot of, you know, podcasts, um, you know, from, from, you know, good people out there that, that you can learn from, um, read a lot. Uh, but I think the main thing is really, it's really talk to our clients. Uh, it's, it's listen yeah. to what their needs, what their pains are, and then how technology can sort of like, you know, um, try to resolve some of those uh, those needs. I think what, you know, one example, again, bringing role. I mean, again, this is about role and for here. Um, so I'm using those as, as examples. But on role, using sort of the AI ML behind the scenes to create a system that is conversational. So there are no forms. Mm -hmm. There are no menus. There are no... Like it's literally like you chat with the uh, with the system, so you know it's facilitating this interface, um, and mm -hmm. this comes from talking to clients and understanding that you know I, I I cannot have go through days of training, I cannot even be sitting on a a desktop to do these tasks. I'm on the go. I'm on my you know, delivery truck, I'm on the field on my construction side or my like what. I, so, again, mobile, some some UI that it's it's conducive to mobile, which we think chat is 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 great. And and that's what we did. We made it we made it a system that you can run payroll just chatting with with the system. And it's still very compliant, yeah. sure that everything is what it's supposed to be, but in an easy way. So. I think to keep up with technology, all of the above, but listening to your your customer and understanding what is sort of like the shortest path to their needs. Don't mm -hmm. try to engage. Try to resolve the problem, the pain that they have. And if that means, you know, simplifying the system so that they don't come to you that often because they don't need to, that's the way to go. I mean, just really shortest path to their happiness. Mm -hmm. No, I love that listening to your customers. It's the core for every successful entrepreneur. Yep. And I'm just going to say, Ken, this is like, I know this is silly because I just said this, but we want to know one of the questions is, what would you say are the three most important habits of a successful entrepreneur? Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, so I'll, I'll start with um, number one is being comfortable with, with failure and dealing with rejections. So whether mm -hmm. that's, you know, getting rejected from your customers to investors to, you know, candidate, I think that 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 is number one. If you're, you know, if you if you don't like a rejection, you know, don't, you know, don't like uh, dealing with any of that, I think it's going to be difficult, challenging road ahead. Um, so having having that sort of thick skin mm -hmm. uh, is going to be number one, uh, very important. Because those are the characters, the attributes of people that don't give up. They would just kind of continue to plow, plow through, whether it's good time or bad time. You're going to hear those rejections. Number, uh, number two, I would say, is having the ability to attract talents. So you can't do this alone. Is no matter what you think, you know, most of the entrepreneurs think they, they can just do, run everything themselves. You got to surround yourself with the best people, the best talents you can find. And, um, you know, I think a lot, and I, I made the same mistake when, you know, during my being a CEO, I wanted to find customers, I wanted to, to um, build products, but 
having the right people and spending more than 50% of your time interviewing, attracting, you know, finding good talents is the, one of the most important things that any company should be doing at all times. Um, and, and I think the last, uh, the last advice uh, or habit uh, is really become the master of your domain. And what I mean by that is um, you, you don't want to be good at everything and or mediocre at everything, but really be able to become that uh, master of, uh, of, of that you know offering that you're doing. So you know, I always believe that every business is essentially an information arbitrage. And what, mm. what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you think about it, like the, why, why is it that the top 1%, you know, controls 90% of wealth around the world? And, and I was, when I was in investment banking, I realized that a lot of times, like in the stock market, how, how come people, individuals cannot beat the market is because a lot of the big money, you know, people who are in the know, they, they control that information. You know, only 1% really have that, in, that, you know, that information while 99% of people don't. That's why you know most people lose lose money in the stock market if you're trying to trying the market, and uh, same thing with uh, with business. Every business, you know, if you have the ability to know something that majority of ninety nine percent of people don't know, a lot of people are willing to pay for that. Whether that you're a brain surgeon to knowing a piece of property that's going to go up in value, uh, people are willing to pay for information that you know you, you, only you know. And, and especially in the, in the market that's, that's growing and, and, and uh, that's doing well. Um, so I think that those are the, the, you know, the three things that you should think about. You know, there's a lot of like people trying to become an influencer and trying to teach people on, on TikTok, or whatever, or building these master classes. As long as, I think those are nice, but it's not really information arbitrage. It's simply just getting more eyeballs. Um, yeah. So I think really figuring out what, it, what uh, you know, what industry you want to do well and, and you got to put in the reps, spend hours like at the gym, you know, just honing in on that, that vertical. Mm -hmm. That's what really separates the, the great ones from the, you know, the good ones. Yeah. So that old adage of eat, sleep, breathe, eat it, right? Like just your whole yeah. life, your whole world is what you do uh, from sun to, sunset to sundown yeah. um, or, or sun up to sundown. Okay. Rapid fire questions. It's this time of the segment that I get really excited about. I'm going to ask you both to answer. We're going to start with Roberto and then can you mm. respond as well? Email, call or Slack. I need to know communication. Slack. Go quickly. Tell me. Huh? Slack. Ken? Slack. 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 All right. Oh, do Coffee. we do answer at the same time or after? I do it after. <laughs> You can do it after. Okay. You can answer the same. I'm, I'm curious. No, you can no, do it ahead. however you want to do it. You go um, first now, Ken. <laughs> yeah, Ken, you go first. Oh, time. coffee for sure. You see your Red Bull? You're, co you're about that coffee life? Coffee. Do you have a s yeah. specific coffee order that you love? I, no, I, I just do mostly. If I'm at home, I do an espresso. Yes. Fast and easy. But All good things. Coffee, yeah. coffee latte, skinny. Latte, skinny. Steps. Skinny, yeah. Note, note to self, skinny. All right. Morning or night person? Roberto, you go first. Night. Same. Night person. Night okay. person. I am, a, I am a night owl. Okay. This is a crazy question to ask, but I'm going to say it. Paper planner, whiteboard, or digital? Or combination thereof, right? It takes a lot to help us function in life. It's founders, I need to know. All Mostly of the above. Is but white, whiteboard is good. I like a good whiteboard. Especially when <laughs> I'm whiteboard. by myself, I still use paper. I got to tell you. Really? Just did a couple from Ken. Ken's, you know, three habits of the end. I love it. It's like, okay, yeah. this is good. I'm going to take notes. Yeah. So it's still the paper. But I agree. I mean, in the office here, when we're all together, whiteboard is phenomenal. It's, yeah. it's you know, you can feel it. You can see it. You can touch it. I think it gives this warmth to the discussion that now I haven't seen digital give the same sort of like, you know, uh, feedback, instantaneous yeah. feedback mm -hmm. that we feel with the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we try like Miro and it, it's not Yeah, no, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. I'm with it's not you, the Ken. same. Um, well, I appreciate both of you being here. And before we go, I want to do a very quick closing thoughts. I think, you know, 
being an entrepreneur, being a founder, a small business owner, we know that the struggle is real. It's very easy to feel alone. And it's really important to have that community, right? It's one of the reasons why we launched Roll Talk so that we can feel that entrepreneurs and small business owners, founders can come together and feel that community. So with that being said, I like to ask this question to every founder I meet. What are some words of wisdom that you can share? Your best piece of advice, the one thing you tell a founder today. Roberto, can you go first? Um, I think I think focus persistence and listen to the customer. Those are the three mm -hmm. things that I, I try to, and, and focus when I say that is like, you know, learn to say no. A lot of people have opinions, mm -hmm. will have adjacencies that you should go into. If you believe in something, keep it simple, keep it focused, persist on that, and then get the feedback from the, from the client. We, ADP is a big company, but we still do that on a daily basis. Right. I mean, we talk to clients, we understand what they're feeling, what their, their you know, their urges and needs are, and we address mm. them. So I think I think for me, focus, you know, and listening to the client and persistence are, are, are the big things. Amazing words of advice. Ken, what about you? It's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a quote from John Madden, the, the football coach. Um, so it's if you're not hitting your goals, don't change your goals, change your action. And a lot, you know, a lot of times in, in this environment, um, we're not, you know, companies may not be hitting their, their revenue goals or profitability goals. Uh, look mm. for ways to, to change action so that you're, you are meeting your goals. And, and, and uh, so really kind of doing that assessment. Um, for us, we, we set up these, uh, you know, quarterly OKRs along the whole company. And that's really, we pay pretty close attention to it. And, you know, in our every board meeting, we review them, but we get scrutinized if you ever change or touch those OKRs. So that's that's something to think about. I love it. That that resonates. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Well, I have to tell you guys, this was our our, was our, our inaugural episode. Excuse me, our inaugural episode of Roll Talk. I can't thank you enough, Ken and Roberto, for joining us. We sincerely appreciate you. Uh, Roll by ADP loves the Tilfo partnership. Um, we're so excited that you were here today. And I just want to say to all of those that are listening live, you know, uh, follow us on social. Let us know if you have any thoughts or, you know, comments or let us know if you think we should be interviewing someone or topics we should be covering. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything that you're doing to, to help small businesses everywhere work and, and get ahead. Um, and that's it for us today. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Have all a great right, thank day. You. Thank you. Have Mac. a good thank one. You all. Thanks. Thank you, Mac. See you. Bye, Ken. Bye-bye.